couple of weeks ago, I examined the impact that various amounts of RAM had on 1080p gaming with both a GTX 1080 as well as an R7 370. You can check out that video right there. Today, I'm back examining how much RAM speed in a DDR4 configuration affects 1080p gaming performance. So without further ado, let's jump in. First up, let's go over my testing methodology. Everything was run on my Intel i7-6700K test bench with the MSI Z170A Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard and the CPU was clocked to 4.4 GHz. And then 32GB of G-Skill RipJaws 5 memory was placed on that test bench. The amount of RAM was so high to ensure that the RAM speed was the only variable in the benchmarking. And as such, the cast latency was also locked down to 16 16 16 36 at one35 volts. The GPUs that were used for testing remained the same from the previous video with the Galaxy GTX 1080 EXOC and PowerColor PCS Plus R7 370 being the GPUs of choice for both high-end performance and entry-level, respectively. The RAM speeds that were tested ranged from 2133 MHz, the base of DDR4, up to 3200 MHz. The games that I chose to test may not be fully indicative of everything that you might play, but I saw them as good representations of current and previous generation titles and genres which could reproduce similar results while benchmarking. So for benchmarking, I used Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor, Tomb Raider, and Rise of the Tomb Raider, both in DirectX 11 as well as DirectX 12. Each game was run at their maximum detailed presets at a 1920 x 1080 resolution. So with that, here are the numbers. Starting off with the GTX 1080, in CSGO, 2133 MHz performed the worst, but only by a few percentage points, going from a 303 FPS average to 324 max average on the 3 GHz setup. With Middle Earth, the performance difference is entirely negligible, with all of the results being within 1% of each other, and the 2400 MHz setup performing the worst. In Tomb Raider, it's roughly the same story of nearly only a 1% change, with the 3200 MHz setup coming in at the highest average frame rate. Rise of the Tomb Raider Direct X11 is where the largest performance increases are seen, with up to an 8.5% increase at the highest speed kit, a near 11 FPS difference. In DX12, the gains are still evident, but less so with the 3200 MHz kit showing a 7 FPS increase, but still a 5% gain. Moving on to the R7 370 are where the results get interesting. In CSGO, there's only a 1% delta between the 2133 MHz setup and any of the others. In Middle Earth, the performance changes are still under 1%, however again it performed the worst with 2400 MHz, just like with the GTX 1080. Apparently, this game hates 2400MHz RAM. In Tomb Raider, it's the same story of less than a 1% delta in frame rates, with most frequencies above 2133 performing marginally worse. Rise of the Tomb Raider DX11 still is mostly under a 1% difference, except for 3200MHz, which is a 2.4% increase, but still only a 0.7 FPS gain. And with the DX12 iteration, again, less than a 1% fluctuation. Wrapping it up isn't as simple as a blanket statement this time. It appears that if your GPU is your system's bottleneck, then RAM speed won't really do a single thing for you, as was the case with the R7 370. If you're going low end on your system with the GPU, buying a higher end memory kit doesn't appear like it'll help you in most games. If your CPU is your bottleneck, however, as is the case with the GTX 1080, then faster RAM speed can offer some modest improvements in frame rates at 1080p. However, we're talking the difference of going from 120 to 130 FPS, which will likely not be necessary on most user systems with a 60Hz panel. However, if you have a 144Hz panel, or something like the PG248Q 180Hz monitor from ASUS, review there, then a faster RAM configuration may indeed actually push you over that threshold. And with the price delta of a higher speed RAM kit only being about 200 grand here in South Africa, or about $20 in the US, that is going from 2133 to 3200, it may actually be worth investing if you have spare room in your budget, if you're going for a higher end GPU that is. At the low end, it appears that basically anything will work, and you shouldn't worry too much about it. So I think that wraps it up for this video on the effect of RAM speed on 1080p gaming performance. I want to give a big thank you to Wootware for sponsoring the GPUs and RAM kit used for the testing in this video. 
Well, where should be your go-to computer retailer in South Africa? With their online shop having a wide variety of memory, graphics cards, processors, peripherals, or whatever you may need for your new gaming rig. Their focus on customer support should give you peace of mind no matter what you'll be buying from them. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to woot up your PC. The link is in the video description. Like this video if you found it helpful at all, dislike it if you disagree with me or my conclusions. Let me know down in the comments if you have any ideas for future videos with regards to testing of various sets of hardware or other PC building ideas that you want me to check out. Also, I just want to say thank you guys for 3,000 subscribers. I'm not going to do a special video for it this time, especially since my 2,000 subscriber video was posted less than a month ago. It appears my growth rate has accelerated and I don't want to do it for every 1,000. I likely will reinstate that uh, with 5,000 subscribers, but I'm really thankful for all of the support, the views, the subscribership, everything that you guys do for me. And if there's anything you want to talk to me about, be down in the comments. I'm always there. You also can follow me on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, I'm in all of those places and willing to talk with you guys. So again, thank you for 3,000 subscribers and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.